Hey everybody, welcome to Clark Woodworks. Today we're going to be building a farmhouse table. Um, this is for my wife and uh, our house. The, um, the dimensions of this are going to be 68 inches long by 40 inches wide. And we just sold our previous table, so right now we're eating off a card table. <laughs> and uh, so my wife's in a hurry. So I'm trying to build this as quickly as possible, but I also want to make sure I do it right. <clears throat> um, we had debated whether we were going to go with a hardwood top like basswood or hickory or something like that or red oak. Um, but the price per board foot, um, especially for about an inch and a half or two inches, was just too high for us to be able to do that. At this time, maybe that, that's the next build, maybe that's the next table, but this time we're using some dimensional lumber from uh, the big orange store. And uh, we are uh, using some 2 by 10s um, some 4x4 four four posts, and a couple 2x4s. The 2x10s two will be the tabletop and the 4x4 um, four posts will be kind of the, uh, the, will be the end legs and the whole end structure leg structure um, and then the 2x4s will be the uh, runners or stretchers. Well at least one of them. So, or two of them. So anyway, um, yeah that's what we're doing and I'm using a different joiner system than I've ever used before. I was thinking of starting out with um, doing uh, just regular floating tenons or tenons. I don't have a domino, which would be really nice uh, in this application because it'd make things fly by. But I don't have a domino, can't afford one, don't plan on buying one anytime soon just because of price. Uh, but uh, I've seen a lot of mortise and tenon joints that look great. And I thought, well, strong, um, kind of like dowels. Dowels are strong too, but I think mortise and tenon are uh, much stronger. So just an opinion. So uh, I was like, okay, I'll do some tenons. I couldn't find any standard tenon stock uh, and none of the local home stores have it for me I don't want to make any only because I don't want to mess it up and that seems like a lot of work so instead of making it I was looking at the Rockler website and I came across this right here this is the beadlock uh, loose tenon joinery system and I've heard about loose tenon joinery and um, this was kind of my first introduction to full-on loose tenon joinery um, I've done a couple test pieces here let's see if I've got anything that's remotely close maybe. Uh, I've done a couple test pieces here. You can see the tenon just snaps down in. Uh, the glue is what holds the tenon in here. It's not a, it's, when they say loose, they mean loose. Um, it's very loose actually. I mean if I can pull it out like that, that's pretty loose tenon. It's, it's got some friction there, but in general it's a pretty loose tenon. So um, the glue is what is, makes this, this uh, tenon strong along with the ridges on it. It looks like a bunch of dowels that glue together and then rounded over or cut on the end. Um, but that's kind of what, what's done here. So uh, we're using that. Uh, you'll get to see how it works. We'll see. I've never used it. This is, was my first test cut with it. It went pretty well. There's some setup with it, but you'll get to see how that works. And uh, maybe I can give you a little bit of uh, feedback on it. Um, other than that, uh, oh, I guess I should probably tell you. These plans were based off an Anna White blog post on a table, similar table she built. Uh, only difference is the dimensions of it are a little different than what we're doing. But um, that's, it's about the same thing. So I'm following some of her dimensions and some of them not. Uh, what else? I'll link that below in the comments section or in the uh, description. So slide change plans here. I am, uh, my, my miter saw is broken. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I don't like doing this because of how unpredictable it can be. And it's kind of a pain in the rear to do, but I'm going to uh, do all my cuts on my table saw. Uh, miter cuts are not fun on a table saw, but gotta do what you gotta do. So, we're gonna start with that. Don't try this at home. So, right now we're gonna build the legs um, for either side, and the assemblies are pretty simple. Um, these are the stretchers here. So, this will be the legs. There is a stretcher that goes in between them. And then there's a top that goes on top of them. So it basically makes a trapezoid with a longer top. So basically, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Alright, so uh, what I did here was I, I'm trying to show you, is that I did two pocket holes per side, uh, well not per side, but I did them on the inside and then on the, uh, the sorry, the inside leg, like inside portion of the leg that faces the other 
uh, side of the leg, and then the inside that's going, um, going to be facing the other end of the table. I don't want the outward facing um, surfaces to have pocket holes on them if I can help it. So I'm going to try with four pocket holes securing this together. I think it's going to be strong enough. Uh, that combined with the geometry of it should hold really well, shouldn't be an issue. Here is the stretcher that goes in between. You'll see I've got pocket holes on either side and then I put them on the bottom as well. So facing down and then facing in towards the table. I have these pine plugs right here. Um, they're about as close as I'm going to get to what I've got. Um, so yeah, we're going to use these, but uh, everything should work out pretty well from here. Now I'm going to assemble this leg. I'm not going to bore you with the details of me drilling pocket holes in the other set of legs. I'm just going to build one for now, and then uh, I'm not going to record the other one. And just it's the same procedure. You're going to follow the exact same procedure I, I do here. So. So let me stop here for a second and explain what's going on. I decided to use pocket hole joinery instead of the uh, beadlock loosening joinery for several reasons. First being that it was very difficult to line up the mortises um, and I didn't want to spend hours trying to figure that out and get it all lined up perfectly. So instead I decided to go uh, with some glue and pocket holes and screws. I think it's going to hold just fine. I think it's going to be great. I was looking for the polished look, but um, what I did was I used some of the plugs that Craig sells with the, um, or separate from the pocket hole jigs, and um, I glued them into place after securing the boards together and then sanded it down and made it look flush. So they're really not noticeable, but uh, maybe in the future I'll use the loose tenon joinery or a mortise and tenon joint. All right, so I got a finished leg assembly here, at least uh, kind of fully, completely assembled. A um, couple things to note. Uh, this is not fine furniture making. This is not a um, uh, fine lumber. This is not a, um, uh, what's the, this is not like cabinetry, and this is not like, um, at least I'm not using lumber like that. I'm using rough cut lumber, dimensioned lumber that's, not the best, uh, you get them from your home stores and they've got warps and cracks. And so when you're doing that, you may come into a small areas like this one specifically doesn't have a perfect, uh, the gap is not, I mean, the, not the gap, but the seam is not perfect. There's a slight gap, I mean, millimeters. Um, and that happens just how things slope and if there's chip out. So, uh, but this is a farmhouse table. So the idea is that it looks rustic. Um, it's gonna have some character. It's not gonna be, uh, at least the legs and things like that. The top I'm trying to make uh, a lot more smooth and finished up. And uh, it, I think it's gonna look pretty cool. So yeah, that's what you're getting into when you're doing this. You just have to kind of make do. So I use this Minwax Poly Shades um, stain and polyurethane in one step kind of thing. Um, and so I get the first coat done, uh, let it dry for about eight hours, and then sand the whole thing, <clears throat> and or six hours, eight hours somewhere on there. And uh, got it sanded with about 400 grit sandpaper. Now I'm gonna go back over with a second coat, and um, after that we should be good. That's just the base. Now I've still got the top back here. I need to do a little bit of prep work on it, some sanding, but uh, so far I really do like this poly shades. I've used it on a couple other projects, smaller projects, and I wasn't sure how it was gonna turn out. A um, couple words of caution here. Make sure you stir this frequently. It says it on the back, they really mean it. Uh, you can see it kind of clump up, the poly does. Uh, a couple, another thing is watch your bleed. You know, it's with stain. You know, stain does this anyway. It runs and it'll kind of clump up. Um, but watch it, especially with the poly in there, it's really hard to get off. I have a couple spots I had to sand down pretty hardcore. Uh, but overall, it's going to have a rustic feel to it. It's going to look really cool. So I'm going to start with the uh, second coat of stain and poly. So here we go. 